As my wife coyly squinted, a subtle smile played on her lips. She twirled a small leaflet before my eyes, shaped like a symbol of manhood. It reminded me of the days when we were children, flipping through biology textbooks, yet failing to replicate such intricate drawings. I was both amused and intrigued by her gesture. No, no, look, she exclaimed, flipping the paper over. This is Sanja's creative way of inviting us to a strip tease. She went the extra mile and ordered individual invitations for each of the girls. It's quite original, although displaying them under glass might not be appropriate. Sonia happened to be the fiancé of one of my closest friends. We all belonged to the same tight-knit group, consisting of our classmates and peers. Over the years, most of us had settled down and started families, with two even having children. However, Lyashik still found himself unable to make a firm decision. He had received numerous applications, but none seemed good or responsible enough. Sophia, attempting to become a part of our group and forge connections with both the guys and the girls, somehow struggled to fit in. We grew concerned about her consistent excuses and unfulfilled promises. There were instances when we planned outings, like barbecues, and she would promise to marinate the meat but never follow through. It wasn't a significant problem as we could easily buy pre-marinated meat from any nearby store. However, these occurrences subtly hinted to our friend that Sophia had a slight disregard for responsibility. Sadly, she chose not to acknowledge these hints. After eight months of dating, Sonia proudly revealed a magnificent ring, and naturally, we all congratulated the soon-to-be-wed couple. Wedding preparations proceeded as expected. The groom's male friends, particularly those around his age, received invitations to a striptease event. We knew that on the 23rd, we would be treated to an evening of gazing at nude women, with the official permission of our wives, of course. As it turned out, the female guests would also get their dose of excitement. Two days after receiving the invitation, the girls would attend a male striptease. Deep down, I felt glad about this development. Now, I would have a trump card to play. My wife wouldn't be able to accuse me of ogling nudity because she would be doing the same. On that day, Alianka seemed restless. I've never seen a male striptease before, and I'm afraid I won't like it. And to be honest, I'm even more afraid that I might enjoy it, she confessed. Don't worry, I reassured her. I'll wait in the car outside the club. If you want to leave, just come out and we'll drive away. No, Sanja took care of it. She rented a private room in the club for the whole night just for us. All right then, hang in there, I replied. To be honest, I wasn't worried because I had complete faith in my wife. But sometimes, even when you doubt yourself, it's hard to be 100% sure. Two hours after Alianka left, I dialed her number and asked, So, how is it? Interesting, interesting, it's beyond interesting. There are seven of us girls, and between us, there's a beach and two men. One is dressed as a firefighter with a helmet, and the other is a brave policeman with handcuffs. Of course, they won't be taking off their clothes, she explained. Honey, you're not listening to me. One is wearing a helmet and the other is wearing handcuffs, she clarified. I felt a twinge of jealousy, but I quickly dismissed the unfair emotion. Sweetheart, my wife said firmly. Let's appreciate the artistry of the performance, like Robin's choreography. Well, Robin's usually includes at least some covering for certain body parts. By the way, how are those body parts? I'm starting to feel a bit self-conscious. You know, there's curiosity, and then there's practicality, I replied. Here, everything is practical, functional, and on display. They are quite intriguing but I think it's impractical. You could easily get injured with something like that. Alenka, I'm here for you anytime, ready to serve with all my functionality. Just please appreciate it and come back, I pleaded. I realized that my wife was already in a state of intoxication, her words flowing freely. It was around six o'clock in the morning. 
my beloved stumbled into the apartment with the grace of a tipsy elephant. She struggled to remove her shoes but failed, ultimately collapsing onto the bed with one shoe still on. Within moments, I heard the soft sound of her snoring. With a theatrical flourish, I removed her shoe and then proceeded to take off my jacket. The most challenging part was removing her pantyhose. Finally undressed, I ensured that there was nothing extraneous, tucked her in, and made my way to the kitchen to brew some coffee. Sleep was no longer on my agenda. The coffee machine hissed, but I was interrupted by a notification beep from my phone. It was a set of photos that had arrived, not on her phone, but in our shared Google Drive. Yes, it's not a common practice these days for individuals to share digital spaces, as everyone strives to create their own personal zones to store what's most important and private. However, this was a collection of family memories, akin to a bag of black and white photos from Soviet times. I recalled my wife's earlier words about something curious yet impractical. I couldn't resist my curiosity, so I decided to thoroughly examine the contents. At first, I saw two burly men in overalls, just as my wife had described, a policeman and a fireman. With each successive photo, pieces of their clothing disappeared, revealing sculpted muscles, smooth legs, and hairless chests. When they were completely undressed, it became evident that their size was indeed impressive, well above average. It was clear that the depths of an ordinary woman wouldn't be enough for them. Such thoughts occupied my mind as I mechanically flipped through the photos, now holding a cup of coffee, when suddenly, something caught my eye that completely shattered my perception of that evening. Sophia was pictured dancing with the firemen, or rather, dancing a bit too intimately for my liking. I didn't want my wife rubbing her legs against the head of a lustful stranger. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. What followed in the subsequent photos was far more explicit, a short video that connected all the dots. In the footage, my wife playfully pulled out some bills from her purse and, without counting them, concealed them under the fireman's helmet. Then she removed her pantyhose and climbed on top of the man. It was no longer just a dance it was something entirely different. I realized that Alenka appeared several times in the video, causing a surge of excitement in me. Hastily, I scanned through all the footage. Another man emerged in the foreground, receiving financial support from Sofia as well. Alenka was seen lying on the couch while policeman was on top of her. However, that wasn't what caught my attention. I was eagerly watching for the presence of the lilac skirt and white blouse. Before becoming the subject of several photos, Alenka modestly appeared in the background, vomiting into a pot with a live flower. I was prepared to pay fines for the flower, the pot, the soil, or anything else, just to know that my wife had merely been observing these men. Lyoka certainly didn't deserve this, but he shouldn't have to live in ignorance either. To address this, I invited Lyoka to my house for the evening, hoping Alenka would soon awaken from her slumber. Alenka confirmed that Samya had indeed become acquainted with both men that night, one of them twice. Samya had given them money and reassured them that it was normal for her future husband, my friend Lyoka, to engage in such behavior. She implied that having a one-time relationship with the opposite sex before marriage was natural as long as fidelity was maintained after the wedding. As I recounted the situation to my friend, I was overcome with emotion and even suggested he refrain from looking at the photos. However, how could I deny him the opportunity to see the truth? Lyoka glanced through a few pictures, set down my phone, and angrily pounded his fist on the couch before storming off. He paced around the room, attempting to speak but being interrupted with each word. Shocked and disoriented, he struggled to gather his thoughts and articulate his feelings. I feared he might damage something or harm himself. After a couple of minutes, he thanked me and left. I wanted to chase after him, but he signaled for me to stay. He is a grown man, capable of taking care of himself. I realized that he needed time to process the new information and come to terms with it. 
the wedding was subsequently canceled. Meanwhile, Sanja shifted the blame onto one of her girlfriends for the breakup, claiming that her entire life had been ruined because of some idiot. While it is common for five-year-old children to deflect blame onto others, individuals in their 20s should be capable of recognizing their own mistakes and avoiding such actions. I don't believe the primary culprit was the girl with the camera. She merely served as a catalyst for Lyuka, helping him to see the truth. I feel sorry for Lyuka being left alone in this situation, but he doesn't need a woman who engages in promiscuity. It's fortunate that these revelations came to light before the wedding took place. Dear friends, thank you for listening to our stories. Subscribe to the channel, put likes and leave your opinion in the comments. Don't forget to press the bell not to miss new stories, which we try to publish every day. We also remind you that everyone can share unique stories from their life or the lives of friends, which can be sent to us by email, which is specified in the description of the video. Good luck to everyone and be happy.